episode 128. I wanted to say a special thank you to all of you who sent prayers my way and some kind words uh, regarding my knees. And I thought I would give you a little up update. I am upstairs, so I was able to get up the stairs now. Um, we think we figured out what's going on, so let me fill you in a little bit really quick. Um, I have arthritis in both of my knees and have for years and years. My left knee does not have the main ligament in it. I snapped it playing volleyball at a church picnic about uh, 13, 14 years ago. Yeah, it was not pretty. I fell down and my skirt flipped up over my head and my kind um, congregation did not laugh or point at me over that. They, they just pretended they did not see the total ugliness that ensued. But um, anyway, so that, that knee is not the one that's actually hurting me. It's my other knee. Um, about a year ago, I was climbing into a van at work, and my feet were a little slick, and the running board was a little slick. I went one way, and my knee went the other, and it kind of hyperextended. So over the past year, I have had a whole bunch of x-rays, physical therapy, a knee brace, and a cortisone shot. And all along, I kept telling them that my knee was clicking, and I thought I had a torn meniscus or a torn ligament, because it felt very similar to when I tore the other ligament, my other leg. They finally, after a year, have decided that they will do an MRI. So um, that's where I'm at at this point, is waiting to see the results. I have to get the MRI done in a couple weeks, and then I will find out what's going on with it. But again, thank you to all of you who have... Just wished me well over the last week. I appreciate it, and it is feeling better as long as I wear the brace on my knee. Well, this week has been an absolutely busy, crazy week. Uh, so, um, yeah, we had somebody spend the night at our house. Uh, he spent the night at our house before. He's a pastor that works through the uh, missionary organization that my husband and I volunteer at. And he's very gracious, thankfully. Um... I had a small kitchen kitchen disaster this week. Um, his wife is a very, very good baker. I mean, as in has auditioned for a very famous TV show type of baker. And I'll tell you more about that at the end of the podcast. If you want to stick around for it, I will tell you my crazy kitchen disaster. Actually, disasters. I will tell you the cooking's not my thing. It really isn't. Um, I try hard, but, but cooking is not my thing. There's been many a kitchen disaster. And if you want to watch that, I will tell you some of my crazy, crazy kitchen stories at the end of the podcast. Now, so if you want to find out what happened this week and uh, some other craziness, stick around to the end of the podcast. So let's get to the knitting content here. I have a finished object. Actually, I have two. This was finished last week, uh, but I did not wear it yet because it still had to be blocked. So I do have it blocked now. This is the Galaxy shawl. It is a free pattern. Now, I will tell you, it's a small shawl. If you're a very small-shouldered person, this would be great. But if I put it around my shoulders, it works, but it's definitely a shawl at. So that's why I was wearing it in the front. And it has been blocked now. And there, it's really not fire engine, that orangey red that it's showing up. It's more of a, a burnt red color. So there it is blocked and finished. So you can see the lace edging much easier. Like I said, this is a free pattern, and it's a very easy pattern because you knit the lace first, and then you go up and pick up the stitches and then do short rows and just knit back and forth. This is the shawl that a co-worker thought I was knitting the stripes intentionally in last week, and I had to explain to her, no, it's striped yarn. I didn't do anything. I guess I could have told her I was knitting the stripes in, but that would probably not be very good. No, that would not be nice. So I, I told her the truth, and I said, no, it's just striped yarn. I just knit. It does it itself. So anyway, there it is. Again, that is the Galaxy. Let me see if I can get it closer so you can see the lace a little bit better. There it is. So 
So that is totally finished object number one. Object number two, I finished my doily. Last week, I was right here. This is the fractal doily. This thing is huge. But anyway, this is where I was last week. So I knitted these two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, oh, twenty, twenty two. Oh, 24, 26 rows. I, I knitted 26 rows this past week. And, but it is done. Now you may be thinking this is a little odd shaped. It is a different shape for a doily. I am going to insert a picture because to try to hold this out, but this kind of gives you an idea. I will put a regular picture in in just a minute, but this kind of gives you an idea of it. It's like two propeller blades, and it is about two feet all the way across. So it is a good sized doily for your table, especially if you have a large table like I do. Um, although I'm not keeping this, this version is going to go to my mom. But um, anyway, and I hope she's not watching and just heard that. Oh well, mom, if you're watching, you did not hear a thing. Just pretend to be surprised when I give it to you. Anyway, um, let me insert a picture of what it looks like laid out on a table. So this was a lot of fun. It was very easy. It's mostly all double crochet and chain stitch, which is why I could handle it. Um, I don't think I'm quite up to the fancy doilies yet, but this one was very easy to do. I could actually understand, understand the pattern. This was done with a size two millimeter um, hook and the yarn, or I guess they call it crochet thread or doily thread. It was a size 10. So it's the, it's the smaller, thinner. I am gonna make this a second time for my kitchen because that's where my dining room table is. And I am doing it in these two colors which are the color of my kitchen. This is kind of a cornflower blue, kind of country blue, and a yellow. And I might try to find, this is this is size three, because I'm gonna use a bigger crochet hook this next time. Um, I might try to find a navy blue or a white that's in a size uh, three to do this, to add to this, but I'm not sure. But these two are definites that are going into it. So that will be my next crochet project, as well as I want to make another pair of slippers, but I want to crochet a pair of slippers, and my yarn shop owner uh, was making a pair of slippers out of this yarn, and I got this, um, I think it was like three weeks ago, something like, I think it was three weeks ago, I bought this at her shop. It is Katia Berry. I have two of them in two different colors. But I'm going to make this one, I think, first. They both have the same kind of taupey brown in it, but this has kind of a limeish green, kind of highlighter greenish yellow and a turquoisey blue. This one has that same taupe and it has a pink and a purple in it. So I will be making both of these. And this yarn is, I believe it's a cotton. Yeah, it's 100% cotton. And it's 120 yards per ball of yarn. So that will also be another crochet project coming up. So that is my finished objects. Now let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing with the doilies, because I'm not the only one making them. We are having a doily along, and it runs until the end of the month, which will be April 30th, 2019. You can enter any doily that you have finished during that time. So you don't have to have started it you know, in the last month or so, as long as you finish it in by the end of April, you can submit it. The winner will be chosen at randombyrandom.org, and the winner will receive a skein of hand-spun silk yarn um, that I hand-spun. And it's approximately 375 yards. So um, that will be the winner, and I will be drawing that um, shortly after April 30th. I'm not sure what date yet, but it'll be after April 30th. If you would like to enter, you can enter your 
um, doily at the um, Ravelry group, which is Katrina's Creations. You could enter it uh, on Facebook, which is Katrina Knits, or you can send me a photo over at my email address, which is Katrina's Creations at Yahoo.com. All of the links are right down below here, so you can go through any of those and send it out. So again, you've got till April 30th to get that in. And at the end, I will do just like we did the fall along where I showed the projects of everybody. We'll be doing the same for the doily along. So let's get to my works in progress now. This is the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. And last week, I'm on the sleeve. I've done the entire body. I have not begun the second sleeve. I'm still on my first sleeve, and I'm about three quarters of the way down. Last week, you can see I was right here. All of these stitch markers here are where I have done a decrease. Um, I learned a little trick by watching the Knitting ex Expat, which is Mina Phillip. Um, she suggested putting these at every decrease, and it's easy to keep track of where you are at on the sleeve and how many decreases you've done. Uh, for the size pattern that I'm making, I need to do 17 decreases. And I am right around, I believe it's 12 at this point. So I'm hoping to finish this sleeve, hoping, but to finish this sleeve this week. So, um, yeah, so that is my flax light. There you can see all my stitch markers going up the side. The last project I'm working on is my, I think, forever scarf. I keep knitting and knitting on this, and I keep looking at the ball of yarn, and it's not getting any smaller. It's the yarn that keeps on giving. Um, it looks like about the same as what I had last week, but I've knit quite a bit this week on this. So this is another project I really hope to finish this week. Um, at least I'm not mid-row. I can show you where I'm at with this. It is knit lengthwise. This is the cirrus scarf, and this is the linen stitch. This is what the back looks like. It is reversible. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's extremely soft because it has alpaca in it. And it is 355 stitches all the way across. And it's just very plain and simple. I mean, here's the edge. It almost kind of forms an I-cord edge to it. So, um, yeah, I've knit a good bit on this, probably an inch and a half on this this week, maybe a little bit more. And I keep looking at the yarn, and it's just the yarn that never ends. So uh, I hope to get that done. I really, not that my husband's going to wear it this year, because it's starting to get warm out again. Um, so it'll be for next winter. <laughs> So now it is time to see what you all are making, and there's a lot of stuff in Show and Tell this week, so I hope you all enjoy.
If you'd like to enter something for the show and tell segment, please feel free to do so. You can enter again over at Katrina Nitz, which is my Facebook page. Uh, just make sure you stick in the post that it is for um, the show and tell so I know it's okay to post it in there. Uh, so anyway, you can post it there or you can send me a photo over on um, my email, which is again, Katrina's creations at yahoo.com. We all like seeing each other's uh, projects. I think this is one of our more popular segments out of this entire podcast because I just, I love, I love seeing what everybody is doing and making, which reminds me, I don't know if any of you saw it, but I put up my favorite things on Wednesday. If you haven't seen it, I will click, you can click the little eye here. It will take you to that video. But what I did is I posted 10 of my favorite projects. There are two crochet projects and eight knitted projects because I've only been crocheting for a little over a year, so I didn't have as much to choose from. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I put 10 of my favorite patterns or projects up. And if I knew what the yarn was, I told you what the yarn was and what the pattern was as well. And I tagged a bunch, a bunch of other podcasts and um, yeah, they are putting up their favorite things too. So if you want to check them out, I'm not sure exactly when each of them are going to be posting, but I put the links down below and all you have to do is click on those. Um, I'm sorry, the links are not down below in this video. If you click on the links in the 10 favorite things video, you will find uh, everybody else's as they put them up. And it might give you some ideas of some channels that you didn't know were out there. There is a mix of crochet channels. There is a mix of, of knitting channels. There's some that do both. Uh, there's small podcasts, there's medium sized, and there's some bigger podcasts out there. So um, yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun just for all of us to see what each other are making and what our favorite things are. So um, again, check out that video, just click on the little link and that will take you over there and the links to the other podcasts are on that video as well, down in the description box. So acquisitions this week, I have one acquisition. If you saw my Thursday video that went up, I got my knit crate in. So let me show you what I got. If you missed the video and you want to see me unbox it before I show it here, you can do that. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and show it to you. This is the yarn, and the color is pretty true to color. It's minty green. Uh, the theme was entomology, which is the study of bugs and insects. Bugs are insects. Okay. The study of insects. Um, so this was based on leaf eater, which is a, a type of worm, but it's a pretty worm, but it's a type of worm. Um, but that was the color that they went with. The other color that this could have been was called ladybug, and it was kind of a tonal ladybug red color, kind of a poppy red, um, which was really pretty too. So um, yeah, this is what I got. It's two skeins. It is extremely soft. It is Audin Wool's. And it is a DK weight. It's called Audine Wool's Psy because it's a different base of yarn. Meaning when it says, when someone says it's a base, what the base of a yarn is, it's talking about what the fiber content is. Uh, so this fiber content is 85% merino wool, 15% cashmere, which is where the extreme softness comes from. The merino is soft too, but the cashmere makes it extra special soft. It is a DK weight and there's 302 yards in each skein. Now with Knit Crate, they give you, um, actually here you can see that up here is the ladybug color. This is the one I got. And then these other colors, some of them are the pop-up shop that you can have access to if you are a Knit Crate member. Um, some of that is the sock yarn that's offered as well. So they give you three patterns. You get a crochet pattern and a knit pattern for um, the yarn that they send you, and they send you a sock pattern as well. 
Now, I like both patterns this month, which is really surprising. Sometimes I definitely favor one over the other one. This time it was really hard to choose because I like them both. Here is the crochet pattern. And it is called Chrysalis, and it's by Liliana Bus Chmelko. Now, I did have a viewer ask, can you get this pattern on Ravelry? I checked. Yes, you can. So um, if you're interested and you don't get Knit Crate, but you want to get the pattern, you can go over to Ravelry and get it there. The crochet pattern, or the that was the crochet pattern, the knit pattern is called Canopy, and it is by Destiny Meyer, and that is what that looks like, and I like it too. It's got like little tree branches of lace, so I like that one as well. So like I said, I don't normally like both patterns, but this time I did. Next month's theme is called Farmer's Market, and these are the colors that they are going to draw from to come up with the color of yarns for next month's Knit Crate. So if you are interested in joining Knit Crate, you can get 20% off of your first box. All you need to do is click through the link down below for Knit Crate and put the um, coupon code KCREATIONS20, and that will give you 20% off your first box. The box that I get is called the Membership Box. It's $24.99 a month, and it includes free shipping. The sock box is $19.99 a month. It is one skein of yarn. Sorry about that, I had to sneeze. All the yarn was like poofing around my face, so I had to sneeze. So now it is time for our... Now in our Come and Get It section this week, I've already told you about Knit Crate, so I'm not going to repeat on that one. But we have some pretty good sales, one especially good one, uh, that I will tell you about. Annie's has clearance yarns. They have their Premier Eversoft for $2.99. And they have, and that's a solid color. Then they have Premier Ever Soft Multis, which are um, multicolored. And they are $1.99 this, uh, right now. And those are a worsted weight yarn. Blueprint, which is Craftsy, has Sprightly Super Bulky yarn on sale for $3.19. And they also have, if you liked the basket that Diane made in Show and Tell, there is a free t-shirt yarn basket pattern over on Blueprint. Um, you have to make it with t-shirt yarns, but um, anyway, there's a free pattern over there. Consumer Crafts has sugar and cream, which is the Lily sugar and cream that you make a lot of dishcloths out of. They have it on sale, all different kinds of colors. I think there's over 100 colors over there for $1.57 per skein or per ball or whatever you would call that it comes in. Uh, Create for Less has Red Heart. It's a wrap. Uh, it's on sale for $8.59 up to $11.99, depending on the weight of yarn, because one has um, one is a lace weight and one is a little bit heavier weight, so one has more yarn than the other, so you can go and check it out for yourself. But anyway, it is running $8.59 up to $11.99 for the yarn called It's a Wrap, and it's a gradient color uh, that you can make an entire wrap or shawl out of just the one ball of yarn. Hobium Yarn, over in their Stars of the Month, so if you click on their website, uh, most of their yarn is always about 40% off, but they have one little um, like window you can click on, and it's called Stars of the Month that is an additional 25% off. So what they have over there right now is Car Cartopu Deluxe Yarn. If you buy a single skein, it's $2.21, but if you buy a package of five skeins, they're $1.99 per skein. They also have La Mia Merino. A single skein is $2.48. A pack of five is $2.23. They have Lauren Cotton, which is cotton yarn. Uh, a single skein is $1.28. If you buy a pack of five, it's $1.15. And they have Cartopo, Cartopu Benacli Bebe. Bebe? Bebe? I think I'm, I think I'm saying Bebe? Bebe? B-E-B-E, -E, whatever that would be. In French, it would be baby, but 
Um, and it looks like baby yarn. But anyway, it is $1.91 per skein or five for $1.72. So that is over at Hobium. Knit Picks is offering 40% off of all of their books right now. So um, they also, their yarn of the month is Bear Yarn. It's 20% off. And Bear Yarn is dyed, is undyed yarn. So it's stuff, if you want to use it just plain, you can. If you want to experiment with dyeing at a relatively cheap price, you can get it for 20% off. They have all different types of fiber contents. Uh, bear Yarn, the bear part is the name of the brand. So um, there's all different types of bases. There's all different types of weights of yarn that you could get if you want to play around with dyeing. And you don't have to have expensive acid dyes to do it. You can practice and fool around with uh, simple food coloring and vinegar. You just need those two items and you can dye yarn. So um, the next is Leisure Arts. If you sign up for their email offers, you will get 15% off of your first order. They also have a few of their books on sale. Uh, in the knitting section, they have a book called Fashion Plus Knits on sale for $4. They also have another one called Quick Style for You for $3. Over in the crochet section, they have Little Kitchen Helpers, which are different types of dishcloths, on sale for a dollar five. Yes, a dollar and five cents for different patterns for dishcloths. At least that's what it looks like on the cover. They also have Afghans to Adore, Great Warm Ups, and Homespun war Warmth, which are all different Afghan books, and they are a dollar nineteen per book. So they've got some real good sales on some of their books. And Leisure Arts is known for their craft books. Uh, they've been around for years and years and years. So, um, yeah, anyway, those are the, the sales for Leisure Arts. And then last of all, we have, I think, the best sale that's running right now, and that is over at Lion Brand. Lion Brand is offering 40% off site-wide. Yes, site-wide. You do have to use the coupon code, and when you get ready to check out your order, uh, it will say promotion code. I, I think that's how they word it. It's promotion code. You do need to say, you know, put the coupon code in site-wide 40, and that will get you 40% off your order, which is, yeah, that's really good. It's not, it's not 50%, but it's pretty close, so that's a good one. So if you've stuck around to the end of the podcast, you must be wanting to hear the crazy stories that have happened with me and cooking. Um, I promised this at the beginning of the podcast, so I will fill you in a little bit on what went on. Um, as I said, we had a pastor come and stay with us overnight. Now, his wife, who I've never met, but she sent us the most delicious sticky buns and they're calling my name but I did put them in the freezer so after we all ate one or two just to, for quality control purposes of course um, so that we can just divvy them out a little bit at, at a time and Dave's diabetic so I'm gonna have to sacrifice and eat them myself because he can't have them <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> that was really bad I'm being bad tonight I really am um, probably sleep deprivation. Anyway, on to my story. So his wife has won all kinds of different baking awards, and she has auditioned several times for the Great American Bake Off. Yes. So what is Katrina making for dessert? I mean, no pressure, you know. I have a box mix for a key lime pie. So I thought, okay, that's what we'll make. And I opened up the box and I started to make the graham cracker crust. And I noticed that the graham cracker crust had this kind of odd offsetting smell. It didn't smell rancid, but it just smelled like chemicals, like it had picked up the smell of the package it was in. But I thought, ah, oh, well, maybe that'll go away. We'll just make the pie and hope for the best. Well, thankfully, something told me the next morning taste that pie before you um, give it to people to consume. So I took a spoon and took a little bite right where the crust was. 
I put it in my mouth and pretty much spit it right back out again. It was really, really nasty. I felt like I was sucking down a spoonful of chemicals. So the pie went into the trash can and I left a note for Dave, pick up something at the grocery store. So what does the man whose wife has auditioned for the Amer Great American Bake Off get for dessert? Sara Lee Cheesecake. Yeah, that's what he got. Um, total embarrassment. He was like, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. I was like, I felt that big. I was like, oh, total. It would, I, felt, I would have felt worse had I served them the, the nasty key lime pie and we all got sick or something. That would have been even worse. But anyway, um, cooking is not my strong point. And over the years, um, Dave's been very patient because his mother's a good cook. Um, we first got married and he told me we should buy, you know, we were, we were living on a very, very tight income at the time. So he told me, you should buy a whole chicken and cut it up. It's cheaper than buying the parts. I said, okay. So I went to the store. I bought a whole chicken. I came home and couldn't figure out what in the world to do with it. I cut the arms and the legs off of it and I put it in the oven and cooked it. And my husband came home, and you know how it is with newlyweds. It's like, oh, honey, what are you fixing for dinner? It smells so wonderful. And he opened up the oven. There's the wings. There's the legs. And that was it. He was like, um, where's the rest of the chicken? And I went, oh, that part. I cut the, I cut the arms and legs off, and I couldn't tell the front from the back, so I just threw the rest of it out. And he went, you threw the breasts out? I said, well, they were pretty flat. It was not a well-endowed chicken. I couldn't tell the front from the back. So I just, it was like icky feeling. So I just threw it all out. Those were the most expensive wings and legs that we ever ate. And I've never bought a whole chicken to cut up ever since. And we've been married 37 years now. Then there was the pizza incident. My sister-in-law was over at our house and I had a frozen pizza in the microwave and we're sitting there talking. It was like a Friday night. We were going to play games and have pizza. So we had a frozen pizza. We hear this whoosh come from the kitchen and all of us start looking up and there's this sparkly stuff flittering through the apartment and it wasn't pixie dust. Um, I had cooked hamburgers the night before on the broiler that was underneath the stove, you know, on the bottom, like the underside drawer thing, and forgot to remove the tin foil, and it caught fire and literally exploded and shot up through the vents in the uh, in the stove. And yeah, it, it was flittering throughout the apartment. This little silvery, glittery stuff all over the place. Then we had Thanksgiving dinner, and my mother-in-law was coming for Thanksgiving dinner. I think we'd been married maybe two or three years at the time. I was not about to admit to my mother-in-law that I did not know how to cook a turkey. So I called my grandmother up and I was like, and I didn't want my mother to know I didn't know how to cook a turkey either. She would have felt like a failure as a mother. So I called my grandmother up and I said, Grandma, how do I cook a turkey? So she gets me straightened out, tells me what to do. The only thing she didn't think about, because it should have been like pretty simple for everybody else maybe, but not for me. What direction do you cook the turkey? Does it die with its legs up or do they die with its legs down? So I didn't want to really feel stupid. And this was before the day of internet when I could have simply Googled this. I started looking through magazines, looking for people holding turkeys. So I knew whether the legs were supposed to be up or down. And I couldn't find one for anything. The only thing I could find was how the Grinch stole Christmas and then they cooked the roast beast at the end of it. Its tail was up and its legs were down and that's how I cooked the turkey. Um, so my mother-in-law came in Thanksgiving day. She's like, oh, Katrina, it smells so good. And she looks in the oven and she goes, you've got the turkey upside down. And I went, that's why the stuffing kept falling out of it. I didn't know, but actually I cook turkeys that way now all the time because it keeps the breasts moister. I have learned to cook a turkey since, but uh, yeah, that was my disaster with the turkey. And then we had exploding chocolate. Um, I had watched a TV show and they made these like chocolate shells with balloons. And then they deflated the balloon after the chocolate hardened and it created like a dish. And then you like squirted ice cream into it and let it harden back up again. So we were having company over, and I thought that would be an exciting type of dessert to have for people. 
So I did that, but what the the TV show failed to tell you was you needed to get the, the chocolate a little bit cooler than when it's piping hot. I had the chocolate all over the balloons, and then they got hot, and the balloons exploded and shot chocolate all over the kitchen, literally all over the kitchen. So I was wiping the walls down and everything else. We're sitting at the dinner party that night, and... I happened to look up and over top of the dining room hutch, which was a good 12 feet away from where the incident occurred. There was a big blob of chocolate on the wall up above the dining room table. And of course, everybody's like, what's that on the wall? So it's like they had to tell the story as they were eating. They're just their plain old ice cream because I exploded the chocolate bowls that the ice cream was supposed to go into. And when I lived at home, my mother used to store, we didn't have like a bread box or anything. She used to store like bags of cereal and stuff in the oven. So I knew I didn't do what you're thinking I did and melt the stuff inside the oven. I took everything out of the oven, laid it on top of the stove, and was cooking in the bottom of the oven. We had this big bag of puffed rice. And my mother was down in Florida taking care of my grandparents at the time. And she would call up every night to check on us and see how everything was going. As my dad's talking to her on the phone and telling her everything's just fine, we're just getting along wonderfully, we start hearing this popping going on, and all of us look over. The cereal bag was exploding the puffed rice, and it was repuffing itself and popping all over the kitchen. And who knew there was an exhaust vent on a stove? I had no idea. I do now, but I had no idea. So it was getting hot, melting the bag, and repuffing the puffed rice, and it was popping all over the kitchen. It got to be so every night my mother and my grandmother called just to see what kind of chaos occurred that day. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Dave's been very patient. Um, people have teased me because my name's Katrina and they think about the hurricane. And Dave has said he should wear a T-shirt that says he's still surviving Katrina. Yeah, but I know he loves me. I think, even though I don't feed him really well and feed him Sara Lee cheesecake. Anyway, <laughs> that is my craziness for this week. Um, so if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And this Wednesday's video is going to be one that actually I was having a conversation with a viewer over. We were talking about knitting gauge. And if you wanted to change the yarn weight, if you're making a sweater, how do you go about doing that? And can you do that? So, um, we're going to talk about that knitting gauge and how to change and it would apply to crochet too so so it will work for either but we are going to be talking about that on wednesday and discussing gauge so i hope you have a great week and i will see you again on wednesday thanks again for watching everybody